Guys, we uh, this is what we're going to we're going to stop now. We're, uh, I wanted to say one or two words, and then uh, Marcia is going to go running around to each table and get a couple of some of the headlines of what you've done and thought about. I wanted to actually just tell you, uh, you know, I, I'm the president of the Metropolitan Water Alliance. I'm honored to serve as co-chair of the Harbor Coalition with Alex Crash. But before that, I was a lawyer and a planner. And when I, the, the organizations I represented, many of them were uh, community organizing organizations, ACORN, the Industrial Areas Foundations, many church groups that did community organized grassroots. And any campaign that's worth its salt needs organizing, grassroots organizing. And any organizing that's worth its salt needs to listen. And this is what I've, I've, I walked around. Cecil? How you doing? So this one. We're going to stop now. So I just want to say that I've, I've listened to a lot of what has been going on. Sorry. That's Paul saying we're going to stop talking. I know you guys are intensely talking to him. Uh, I'm not talking. You're building a book that he had to talk. It's not. You played at it, Harlem. It's not. Got it. I played with Harlem. Uh, anyway. So the uh, point is, I'm just saying, this is a, including what Cecil's doing right there, and it won't stop. The kind of conversations that I've heard going on are critical for the Harbor Coalition's campaign to succeed. I want to thank you very, very much. I can't wait to hear what you come up with, table by table. So I'm going to give this mic to Marcia, but just know that what you've done today is important. What you're going to do tomorrow is 10 times more important because the, the, the work you've done now is going to carry forward in, in a collaborative way with our elected officials to make this campaign work, to make our congregate, our, our congregation. Make this congregation sing together to <laughs> work to get our, 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 our delegation work together in a way that they, I know they can because it's a great delegation to get, create a result that's beautiful for all of us. So anyway, let me stop talking to say thank you. I'll give it to Marcia and uh, look, look to get involved, stay involved, and keep involved in this campaign as it goes forward. Thank you so much.
Are the main um, the main object that we want for our waterfront is there is a very long gap in our access to the ferry terminal on the northeast shoreline of Staten Island, and there's all kinds of new development um, coming along the shoreline. But we have a promenade that is fenced in, fenced up. So there's just a very narrow, dangerous corridor, um, which we want changed. We also want a science lab in Bay Ridge. Woo! On to New Jersey's 13th representative series. Yes. Here you go. Hello all, my name is Gabriel. Uh, to reiterate, uh, actually one of the biggest things that uh, was in common with most of the, not all the projects, was access. Access to actual water by the constituents and uh, voters and everything, and, and access to obviously the resources to get access to, to, to fixing these, these, uh, these docks. And, and so um, the word for us this day was access. All right. Thank you very much. Number two. So our group uh, consisted of a majority of folks who were uh, in uh, from Mercer County to Hunterdon County to Somerset County, all counties that aren't part of the, uh, the ninth legislative district. But we, um, <laughs> some of the priorities that we discussed, nonetheless, um, were uh, complementing the private development of public space along the Hudson Walkway with uh, with federal uh, capital support to to expand and connect the dots between those privately developed um, open walkways. Another idea that was discussed was technical assistance grants to help municipalities to go through the planning necessary to um, uh, create land use plans uh, to, uh, to adapt to the future sea level rise and whether there was a, a federal grant source that may support that. And then there was one specific project, Jersey City Reservoir Number 3, which was identified as, a, as an important community asset that with some uh, support could easily be converted into an important park space for in this heavily developed uh, residential area. Thank you. Uh, 
to be dressed in Spanish just to remind you are in New York City. Um, we, uh, I think we had consensus around sort of broad things like open space, access to the waterfront. Um, I think that everyone at this table came to it with a lot of passion. Uh, it was very clear about what it is that they wanted to be the priority. So we talked about the possibility of a green tech uh, college on the waterfront in Sunset Park, uh, supporting uh, the Brooklyn Greenway Initiative, that's 24 capital projects. Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Bridge Parks uh, is interested in waterborne transportation and $100 million. I kept writing 100000 that's to show you I come from a grassroots organization. I need to think bigger. Um, and uh, from our perspective, from an environmental justice perspective, we talked about um, supporting uh, the conceptual design that was created by the community for our neck of the railway, uh, for making sure that we have a waterfront park that is uh, fully funded, uh, looking at climate adaptation and community resilience, and looking at our part of Brooklyn as a model uh, where you've got manufacturing, community, and environment and using that as a, as a replicable uh, a model that can be funded. There were questions raised about funding, following it, making sure that there's inter- and intra-agency coordination. Uh, my big concern was making sure that we level the playing field, that we look at which communities have the largest amount of environmental amenities and resources, and look at the most vulnerable communities and do a cost-benefit analysis, and figure out how we can address the disparities that exist in our communities, that that is one way of prioritizing so that the, at the end, we all have access to the things that make our communities whole. And uh, there were a number of others, but uh, I'll stop there because uh, I'm sure that everybody has a lot of them. Gracias. Thank you. Once the busiest waterway in the country. 
Um, we want to make sure that funding is secure to ensure the health of the creek, not just but from the Superfund site, but also for decades to come. And I guess the, someone commented that within some years it will become healthier and will come back to life, and hopefully that will be in all of our lifetimes. But um, just to reiterate a lot of what you all said from your um, neighborhoods and different districts, but we're definitely in good company. really fortunate to have um, two members from the educational community as activists at our table. So we have someone from City Maritime and also a professor, marine biologist by trade, and so that was really informative and helpful. Um, some of the key projects that we identified have to do with restoration um, of the wetlands. Um, we did talk about two projects that are currently underway in Southview Park, and also um, the congressman's work and commitment to cleaning up um, Flushing Bay. And we um, talked about uh, the wetlands in Soundview Park and whether or not uh, they were going to be building an educational facility to complement that, which is really key. And so we need some follow-up on that. We also talked about um, boat launching pads, um, various um, projects for um, restoration of oysters and mussels in um, areas in our district. And, um, and um, also, um, we identified actually some um, wetlands areas that we understand is, are contaminated, but uh, could potentially be a great site for um, restoration in the Hunts Point region. Um, so we really kind of ran the gamut, but it was very informative and very helpful, and some great ideas that I have to take back to my group. Moving through the Bronx, three categories. One was tributary restoration and daylighting in a couple of places. Um, a second was connecting greenways along the waterfront where there are gaps, and there's a few of those. And then the last was probably going to be a big one, uh, the mitigation of the reconstruction of the Tappan Zee Bridge. The oysters and the restorations, as, as our brothers next door. Thank you. Uh, hi there, we were represented uh, by the Bronx River Alliance, the Rock from the Boat, by both uh, the city and state offices of the Trust of Public Land, uh, and by Charles Simmons Oliver from Congressman Serrano's office. Um, the, the, the 16th has a, a, an amazing uh, range in that uh, there are two rivers, the Bronx and the Harlem River, within the 16th, although some would debate, some would debate the Harlem is a river. Um, and uh, both of those are among the 11 uh, uh, federally identified urban waters partnership groups. So Congressman Serrano, in great part, is responsible for advocating for these bodies of water to give them the kind of federal recognition that they, they received. So we're incredibly grateful for that. Uh, the, the, the two general areas of priority that were identified were uh, one, uh, both on Harlem and um, Bronx River sides, greenway connections. Uh, similar to, uh, to 17, um, connecting currently developed uh, green areas, uh, specifically on the on the Harlem River. I'm sorry, on the Bronx River uh, between Soundview Park and Concrete Plant Park. Really focusing on trying to, to bridge that gap. Um, did I say oh, Starlight? Starlight and yeah, Starlight and Concrete Plant. Um, and uh, and then the other is, is Harlem River access points. Uh, the Harlem River is still very, very hard to get out onto, uh, both at the end of Lincoln Avenue and Park Avenue, um, all the way down the very southern uh, tip of the Bronx are, are two areas that we're looking at to try to figure out how to, how to make that connection. Thank you. Okay, you ready, Cecil? <laughs> yes, I'm ready, Marcia. Um, so we are the 15th Congressional District, soon to be the 13th Congressional District of New York. Um, and the groups at the table were the Harlem River Park Task Force, uh, the Conservancy North, a Manhattan Wetland, a Ray Fusco with his own uh, company, and we act for environmental justice. And um, everybody here after this time is going to be a member of the Harbor yeah. Waterfront Coalition. So absolutely, we're, we're not 
We're not messing around uptown. Um, and we're going to talk very quickly about three priorities that we established. Because this act is really to help us get both money to create waterfront access, uh, to help us with waterfront parks um, and recreation, and to make the river a recreational site, but also to deal with ecological restoration. There are three projects that have exemplified that for us. Um, on the west side is the North River Sewage Treatment Plant and the West Harlem Piers. We want to create one sort of large area there for both uh, waterfront access for uh, piers and restoration and fixing of some of the piers, but also to do some dredging to allow for uh, larger going vessels to be able to dock there. Um, there is on the east side a long-standing effort to create the Harlem uh, River Park and uh, there are a number of different initiatives there, but extending that park is a top priority, extending it both north and south. Uh, south, there are current construction projects that are uh, coming to a close and the land should be turned back over to New York City parks. Um, but then also going north, there is uh, a space to develop there and hopefully connect that up to uh, the Harlem River Speedway into the future, connecting the total, making it a total connect greenway all the way back down to 65th Street. So that's another project. And then under the ecological restoration piece, we've got uh, both Sherman Creek and North Cove, where some tremendous work has been going on in terms of removing both debris and other types of contaminants from the water. Uh, but we also want to continue some of that work there and make sure that uh, in terms of ecological restoration, Sherman Creek and Swindler's Cove and North Cove are brought back to life uh, in terms of an ecological uh, uh, present gift asset. That's the word I'm looking for, asset, uh, to the Northern Manhattan community. So those are three projects that uh, we thought uh, would be prioritized and deserved a lot of focus and energy. And uh, thank you to Flora for guiding us through this process and making it all work. So, there you go. Thank you. And I, I take this back to our closer. I, I'd like to just say, you know, this is extraordinarily impressive. And if each of you can have a multiplier effect uh, and bring on an equal number of folks behind the projects you've identified, we will have gone a long way to moving this ahead. I think when I was a kid, they called that each one teach one, but some of you may not know that phrase. Um, in any case, thank you so much. This has been great to see this. Um, I hope everybody's enjoyed about this uh, valuable afternoon session. Um, Harvard Coalition folks, if you wouldn't mind uh, collecting your, your, uh, the packets, of the information on the table and just put it in the center of the table, we'll come by and pick it up. Um, Cecil, congratulations, you get the, the, the top gold star, but I would give gold stars to everybody. You guys did great. And keep in mind, what are the three things we need to do for the Harbor Coalition? Sign the petition, harborcoalition.org uh, slash petition, or we have some people still here with paper versions. Russell's right there raising his hand. Join the coalition, harborcoalition.org slash membership, and See me or talk to me or email me if you want to get involved in our outreach this summer. We will be coming to your district. We will hopefully be working with you to continue these conversations across the, the region. Thank you very much. And don't forget to join us on the farm blower. <laughs>